All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 1.30 session of our Ready, Set, Go One Day uh, Professional Development Conference. Uh, I'm excited to introduce our next presenter. He is the composer, composer in residence at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette uh, uh, and bringing to us a wealth of knowledge uh, primarily today about unusual and small instrumentation and how to make it work. So uh, please help me introduce and welcome Dr. Quincy Hilliard. Take it away. All right. you. Okay, thank you. I'd like to uh, say thanks to all of you guys uh, for joining me uh, uh, regarding this workshop. Uh, again, I'm honored to be uh, able to, to work with uh, LMEA in doing this. So uh, feel free to, to jump in and ask questions uh, uh, if, if, you, if you, you know, whenever you feel like it. Uh, the, the workshop deals with trying to rescore for small bands and limited instrumentation. That's the, actually the type of it. Uh, we call it instrumental substitution. Now, obviously, if you trying to rescore the Hindemith Symphony to play with 15 or 12 instruments, it's not going to work. OK, so lots of times when you're rescoring things, it's because you have a lack of those instruments or those instruments are weak in that area. And you need to to, I guess, kind of bolster the strength of that instrument. I mean, of that instrument so that you can have that uh, in, uh, uh, in in your band. So uh, lots of times you might end up with odd instrumentations. Say, for instance, if you just transfer from one school to another and you just got there and you have some type of instrumentation that is kind of uh, uh, kind of overbalanced in some ways. Now, what I really want to show, think, I want you to think about, uh, Billy, you don't have to pull this up right now, but just leave it where it is. Uh, the, 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 the sound pyramid that the band is built to be to sound as a dark structure. You know, we always talk about the pyramid of sound. Everybody has uh, talked to you about it. Actually, Macbeth came up with that concept. And uh, that concept is structured so that the bottom of the band, you have a very dark sound. So we're always trying to keep that in place. Now, the the the, the first instrumentation that uh, I show on the on on the uh, on the handout that we have there. And I think Brett is going to make these handouts available to you also. Uh, it's it's one that I did a while back, so we can't make it any bigger. But if you could zoom your sc your screen, you could see what we have there as an instrumentation. I think I have like ten trumpets, one horn. Let's see if I can blow my screen up a little bit more so I can see it also. Um, we have like ten trumpets, one horn, one baritone, two trombones, and one tuba in this particular one uh, that has too many trumpets in it. If you really want to think about it. So as we were doing that, I was trying to use move the four trombones. I mean, you move four of the trumpets to try to build something that would be a little bit better instrumentation, which would give you two two tubas, two trombones, two baritones, and two horns. Now, we're actually if you're going to be rescoring things. I also ask you to do this: try to match the compose the color that the composer intended. Lots of times when we think about rescoring, we actually reach for the saxophone or the tenor saxophone in some cases when it, when really the baritone is actually a much better tone quality instrument to kind of match that sound. Lots of times the, bar the, the, the baritone actually blends well with clarinets in the lower register if you had to use it there. Uh, sometimes the alto sax can be used. And we'll talk about that as we move further with using a cover. But in this instrumentation, what I'm going to do is take the four trumpets out of the trumpet section. I'm going to rescore one of them uh, for that uh, trumpet part where he can play it on his on, on, on French horn. OK, I'll take the other uh, baritone, put one on. I uh, think I put two on baritone, which is easy. You take the treble clef baritone part and give it to him. Now, sometimes people will tell me I got a lot of trumpets, but I don't have any trombones. You can take a trombone part. Think for just a minute. Now, take a trombone part, transpose it up step in an octave, and it'll look like a treble clef trombone part, just like the treble clef baritone part. Okay? Think about that. The treble clef trombone and treble clef baritone is the same thing. You just move your trumpets to baritone and then let them sit in that, in that, in that section. Wherever, whenever you rescore an uh, instrument for something, and it's going to be for that entire piece, let them sit in that section as part of that. 
so that to, uh, that tr if you didn't have any trombones and you had trumpets, you could take the trombone part, write it up a step in the octave or whatever, two octaves, I mean, an octave, and take up both of them, first and second trombone, and then move them over there, and then you got those trombone parts covered. And the trombone and the baritone, although they're different instruments, they have pretty close to similar sound. Now, the tuba is going to be a, a little bit different for you. If I took a trumpet player and moved in the tuba, I got to take that tuba part and write it up a step and two octaves where it'll look like it's in treble clef. So that low B flat on the tuba will look like middle C on the trumpet up under the line C. So the trumpet player will be able to do those fingerings, okay, as though they were tuba fingerings, uh, as though they were treble clef fingerings for his, his, uh, for his trumpet. And as he does that, once he's able to play a few scales with that as he learns the tuba and play the scales, say the, the B flat scale or the concert B flat scale, the concert E flat scale, then he'll be able to handle that part as long as it's transposed up for uh, two step, two oct two, uh, what is it, two octaves and a step. So that's an extreme issue there where you will be able to use that to do that in that sense. Now, again, when you start to rescore things, uh, as I said, try to match the composer's color that you're doing. Okay, Billy, go to page two. All right. Uh, I, that's how I, I explain the entire concept that I just did there as I went, as, as I was telling you, going from page one, I mean, from moving each instrument where it needs to be. Okay, page, uh, next page. All right. Now, when we start rescoring for different instruments, say for instance, when we only have one flute. Okay. There's only a few things you can do with the flute because of its tessitura where it is, okay, that you can rescore things for. Sometimes you might be able to add a xylophone to it, but you're actually changing the color of the piece, okay? Now, if it's low enough, you can actually uh, have a clarinet player to play it. Say, so for instance, where we are now, if you look at that second uh, example down there, that part in the flute might be weak in the flute, but you could add one clarinet to it or two clarinets to play that flute part in that passage that might be a little weak in that if you only have one flute. And sometimes I've encountered bands that might only have two flutes. And when they're playing, sometimes the dynamic level might tell them to play soft. And I say, no, it's only two of you. Always play loud. Okay, so you got to be careful that you balance out that the, the volume that's playing so that you're trying to match the color uh, or match the idea that the composer had in mind. All right, Billy, go to the next one. All right. So you see that I have up there the ranges that will color will cover for the flute. You got the clarinet up to a certain point, then the bells and xylophone, which I don't like unless you have to use them. And then you got the xylophone and bells on the other one. If if uh, if you uh, you have to use those in there. Now, if you're going if you're doing these for your spring concert or your Christmas concert or any other performance, I wouldn't worry about what colors you use in there if you're trying to match that with the composer sure but if you want to add something i don't think that's a problem now if you're going to festival that's a little bit different uh i would try to make sure that i let the clarinet do most of that work there because if i add those percussion instruments i'm actually changing the color of what the composer wanted okay for the oboe now when we were writing young band music i want you guys to think about one thing when we're writing for young band or grade one, two, two and a half. The flute, the clarinet, the alto sax, the trumpet, and trombone and baritone, or baritone. Sometimes, if you have both trombone and baritone, in in the in the young grade one, it's only need to be one of them. And the tuba. Those are all only five necessary instruments that you need to play. Think about what I just said, because everything else is going to be double. Because we are taught that the, your band director might not have those instruments. So you're never going to fly an oboe solo at grade one, two, uh, grade one and two. You might find one at grade three and it might be cued someplace. OK. Uh, and unless it's a, a, an important part, a solo part, then, you know, it's, it's probably going to be cued if it's a solo part. Uh, sometimes in the saxophone, sometimes in the trumpet. And they usually use the trumpet with the mute. I don't particularly like that color. I don't think it's 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 uh, 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 part of the oboe sound, but uh, I think uh, Scott Geiger mentioned to me yesterday, and I had forgot because this handout is kind of old. But you also can use the soprano sax, okay, 
to cover for that oboe if you had to. And that's that's a good instrument that would do it and come pretty much closer to the uh, quality of the sound that you need. OK, so now I have the oboe. If you're trying to cover it, sometimes you could use the clarinet or you could use the trumpet and then insert this range here. You could use the alto sax to cover it if you had to. All right. Moving on down to the clarinet. Go back one, Billy. OK, moving to the clarinet. OK, now you see you have the clarinet there. Uh, and you have we have different ranges of the clarinet that we can use to cover. The tenor sax is really good in that range where it is now and the horn. Uh, in the next range that we have, the alto sax works really good. And when I say a muta covering, I want to clarify this. I like for the clarinet when, when, the, when the alto sax is being used that you, you can take a, uh, I think as Brett called it yesterday, a bath cloth or watch cloth and put it over the bell of the bar of the, of the saxophone, all of them, uh, alto, tenor, and bar if you had to, and put a rubber band around it. Okay, now that's going to take that edge off that saxophone and hip it to blend better. Now, when you put that on there, you won't be able to play low B flat and C on the saxophone. But we never we rarely write those instruments anyway at, at certain grade level. We rarely use those notes at certain grade levels. So if you were playing a grade four or five piece, you wouldn't probably need to put that cover on there to get that done. But that's what I'm saying is I'm trying to change that color of that, that instrument now. Uh, so as for, for the clarinet, now, as you go up to the upper register, that clarinet, you can also use the flute and in, in some cases use the bells to do that, uh, uh, to, to cover that, that instrument at that, at that range. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. Um, as we do the alto clarinet, no, we was talking about substituting for the clarinet. Uh, Billy, go back one page. I wanted to say substituting for the clarinet. One. If you have clarinet, say for you're playing three parts, one, two, and three. Another good way, as I said, the alto sax is a good instrument to cover for that clarinet. And you would put the bell, put the cover over the bell. Now, if you have, say, you know that the third clarinets or your second clarinets are going to be the weakest of your band. And then you're taught by the pyramid of balance that you give, give say for if you have five clarinets, put two on first, three on second. If you have eight clarinets, put three on first and five on second. If you just have first and second part, but if you only have two clarinets or, or, or three clarinets, you put one on first, two on second. And if you want to strengthen the second part or the third part, if you're going to have those, you can add a saxophone to it. Uh, alto sax. If you got lots of saxophone, let them sit in that section for that particular piece. If they're going to use it or you're going to use them for all three pieces or just that one piece, put that covering on the belt and mix them in with the clarinets. That way you'll get a very, very good sound and it will strengthen that lower clarinet part, which is, should be the strongest of the clarinet's parts anyway. All right, Billy, move over. Good. Now the alto clarinet, and we had a big laugh about this yesterday in the workshop. Uh, nobody has used the alto clarinet. It just kind of disappeared off the page. Uh, before you knew it, it was gone. Nobody even has it. I once had a guy come take a class with me. I think that had 10 alto clarinets in his in his closet and he had kids to play them. Uh, so he wanted to rescore some of the parts for other instruments using the alto clarinet. Uh, the alto clarinet, unless you're playing something safe, it's the, uh, an older arrangement as we go back some years and years ago, some of the war horses. And you need to really look at that part to see if it's covered, it's not covered in some other part. And usually if it's a thinly scored section, like a woodwind section or a woodwind quintet or a woodwind choir like within the band, and they have some certain notes in there that they have to have to bring out the harmony. Then if you don't have the alto clarinet, then you, the baritone will cover for it and the tenor sax will cover for it. But make sure you put that covering over that. But that alto clarinet part is, is very, unless it's in some of the old arrangements where it was it, it was it had important notes in it. And as you're rescoring things, I want you to keep in mind, look at the chord structure as you're rescoring of what instrument has it. So if another instrument doesn't have this, this particular note or this particular tone or these two or three notes at this point, then you have to rescore that to make sure that sound is heard as we do it. Okay. The bass clarinet. And if you have, and usually you, you people are going to have bass clarinets, but if you're having a little, uh, 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 a chamber wind thing was inside a band, uh, uh, a band arrangement, and you don't have a, 
a good strong bass clarinet to play it, or you want to play this piece, but you don't have a bass clarinet, use one tuba to double that part. Okay. You don't need all the tubas to do it. You just need one tuba to do it and having to play very lightly and give a very good warm sound, not a heavy March sound, but a more classical type sound. Okay. Like a string bass type of sound, very, very small type of sound. So it kind of brings that bass clarinet part out. And then in the other range of it, the baritone will work even better uh, uh, in that range. Okay. All right. Keep going, Billy. The next Dr. is Dr. Hilliard. We got, we do have one question. All right. Let's so go with the question. DJ in the chat asked, so alto clarinet is mostly for the color slash texture or harmony, usually in older arrangements. Yes. And I would go, I would venture for the person that asked that question in the old arrangement, it doesn't add that much to the color unless it's playing by itself. But definitely you want to check the harmony to make sure a, a note or something in there that's being played is not being overlooked because it was scored in a woodwind type of setting. You just want to make sure it's not it's not overlooked. But you won't find it in the in the in the ranges that we're doing today. It it, it it's always covered in some place else, or it's not even on the score. Okay, all right. We're talking about the E flat contra clarinet and the E flat contra bass clarinet, uh, contra clarinet. Excuse me. And those instruments would be subject to something used in a woodwind choir or a, a small thing that's not covered in, a, in in other pieces. See if the piece is actually being played and everybody's playing, then it, uh, it, more unlikely it's not going to be heard. Those contrabass clarinets are not going to be heard because the tubas and the baritones are going to be covering that part. Now, again, if now you're going to see these in today's arrangements, especially sometimes in grade three, but definitely grade four and five, we're going to put those contrabass clarinet parts in there. And we might write that part. I know I've done it sometime where I just wanted the contrabass clarinet sound. Now, <clears throat> some some composers will do that. Others like me will do it and go, eh, they might not have that. I'm going to cue it in the tuba part to make sure that it gets if they don't have it. So when you rescore something, basically you're actually just cueing it to that other part, okay, to make sure that you, you can play it if you don't have it. So the ranges there that are covered, that are really good, well, if this is the part that they're playing, the tuba would cover for it. Then the bass clarinet could cover for it at certain ranges. And then the baritone sax, which I've used as a second alternative because of the quality of sound that it gives. It's a heavy, dark sound. Uh, a heavy, a heavy, bright sound. I don't. That sound will be a little too heavy. Uh, and then you have the baritone that you can use to to cover those ranges in there. All right. For the bassoon, uh, when you do it, when you're looking at the bassoon, uh, usually the bassoon is going to be a solo instrument uh, uh, or used in some very smart, small passages in grades four and five. Even even at grade three, I don't think there are people that will write a bassoon part, but we're going to cue it someplace else. I can assure you because we know that you might not have it. And so what we're trying to do when we do that is to expand the play, a, a playability of, of the piece. So with the bassoon, uh, if it's a solo instrument there, the bass clarinet covers, uh, I got alto clarinet covers and the contra bass clarinet covered in a certain range. But basically that's gonna be for the bass clarinet. Then you can also use the baritone, the tenor sax and the bar sax as a, as a last resort. To cover that bassoon but if you're going to do the bassoon it has a unique color and sound quality uh, the, the only way you probably could get it done I, I would like to hear it if it was rescored only for baritone or bass clarinet because of the color but if you have to use tenor sax then you go ahead and do that all right then we go to the next one which i think is the alto sax uh billy change over okay mostly everybody got alto saxes I haven't seen a band that didn't have any at all, or you got too many. Okay. Cause years back when Kenny G started playing the horn, everybody wanted to play it. I wish he had played the French horn. Okay. Or oboe or bassoon or something and made it sound cool, but he didn't, he played the alto sax and everybody wanted to play it. And for years, bands got, uh, got assaulted with everybody wanting to play alto sax. And so we would move them around sometime. But if you don't have an alto sax, uh, in some places you could use a soprano sax. I'm, I'm pretty sure sound is going to be a lot, a lot brighter though. But if you had to cover for the alto sax, let's try the baritone to center sax. And then if you had to the bassoon 
And in, it's in the next range, you could use the trumpet and the clarinet. Now, as I was saying yesterday to some the band directors, the alto sax just kind of wandered into the band instrumentation. Unless you are playing a solo with alto sax, I want you to try this, all your band directors, sometimes. When you're playing your band pieces, for say sometimes it's that all saxophones don't play, do not play, and play the entire pan piece or half of the band piece, and you see that you really didn't need them unless it was for a solo. Okay, think about that. Now, if you add your saxophones back in, and and you can hear them, then they're actually playing too loud. Keep that in mind. They're actually playing too loud. But bands were written those parts for baritone, tenor. And, and bear sax, unless we are looking at a grade level four or five and we want that little uh, uh, sax quartet sound, or we're looking for that particular color that we want it, then it's going you're going to need it. But usually when you're looking at grade one, two, and three, unless it's a solo in there, we can get away without having any saxophones in our band. Okay, so do, keep that in mind. All right, for the tenor sax, we have the bass clarinet that can cover it. I put the alto sax, alto clarinet again. Then we have the baritone saxophone, the baritone, and then the trombone can cover at that range. And then you have the trumpet, and then you have the French horn that can cover at that range for the, for the for the tenor sax. The tenor sax, if you didn't have one in your band, I don't think you're going to miss it. If you uh, move on to the bar, uh, change pages uh, again, uh, Brett. I mean, uh, Billy. All right. When you go to the baritone sax, if you didn't have a baritone sax in your band, you're not going to miss it unless it's some unique scoring there that have to use that for what the composer wanted in that particular section. OK, so you have a, a tuba that can cover for the baritone sax. And usually that's where the part is going to be double at anyway. Uh, the bass clarinet is going to be playing that part. And also the E flat contra bass clarinet can cover that part. If the part is going to be too low on tuba, we usually write the baritone sax where it's going to cover the baritone, the trombone can cover those parts. And that's where we will write it in that range. So if you don't have it and it's thinly scored in there, use a trombone or baritone to cover it. And in those thinly scored sections, you don't need the whole section to play. You only need maybe one or two people in that section or uh, just one baritone to cover that part if it's needed. All right, trumpets. I once had a lady come take my class, and when she took over a job, uh, she took it over, from, and she knew that she wasn't going to have any trumpets that year. So she brought the music that she planned to play that year, and she rescored those parts for trumpet on something else to kind of balance out our instrumentation to get it done. In fact, I think she actually did the uh, uh, the LBA summer band one time, uh, two or three years ago. She was from Baltimore. And that's actually how I ended up meeting her. Uh, she did the, the LBA band. But in order to cover the, the trumpet, uh, alto sax can cover it. You could use a clarinet, but it's not going to be strong enough. Okay. The, the trumpet is a, the trumpet is such a powerful instrument that the only thing that can really actually cover for the trumpet is going to be the alto saxophone. And most people have trumpets. Now, if you only have one trumpet and you need a second trumpet part, then you take that alto sax put him over there on that rewrite that part for him and then let him sit next to that other trumpet player with the covering on his bell and you'll be able to get away with it. Okay. The French horn, Billy flipped that page on that. So we can look at those ranges. We never, ever, even up to grade three, will write French horns uncovered because we are scared that if we leave them uncovered, some band director going to come to us and say, you know, I would have bought your piece, but I don't have no French horns, so I can't play it, okay? And the thought of that frightens any composer, okay? The horn is a very unique instrument, beautiful sound. When you hear some of those movie scores and those horns that are being played up in that upper register, God, they sound good. But we will never write a horn part. Now, we get to grade four and five. Yes, we will write a horn part uncovered. It's scary. But we'll do it because we figure if you have that, if you're able to play that great level, you're going to have enough horns to do it. OK, so uh, the cover for the horns, if you have a, a, a uncovered part and you need for the horns, baritones would do it. Trombones would do it. The tenor sax could do it. 
in the arrangements that we do now, we never leave the horns uncovered. We'll either cover them with a baritone or trombone part, or we're going to cover them with the alto sax part, or and sometimes the tenor sax part, if we're going to have a bunch of parts. But usually up even in grade three, all the way up to grade three, we only try to use two horn parts. So you're going to have a first and second horn part. At grade one, one and a half, and maybe even two, you're going to have just one horn part, and we might write a DVC sometime. But make no mistake, that is always covered someplace else. It's always covered. We never leave it uncovered. It's almost like a law. Okay, we could be arrested for leaving the foreign French parts un not skewed someplace else and put someplace else. Then you have the trumpet that can cover that part. And I think I put a mute, which is that when I want to cover it, I want to use that bucket mute that the trumpet have. Or I have the trumpets to play into the stand more so you can get that kind of a darker sound when you are using the uh, 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 the trumpets uh, to cover for the trumpets. All right, the trombone, which is down up under there, uh, unique instrument there. And I was telling you when you rescore the trombone part, and if you have a lot of trumpets, just take the trumpets, change them over to baritone, and write their part up a step and an octave, and it looked like a treble clef trombone part. And they can go ahead and play that baritone part. I mean, play that trombone part. And they're the ranges that work out better for the baritone, uh, for that range for the trombone. And then you have the tenor sax. Uh, and I'll say that mute or covering, which I put that bath cloth over it, put a rubber band around it. Then you have the Barry Sachs that could do it. I would also use the covering. And then in a certain range of the trombones, you can use the horns or alto sax to cover that range there. It would give a very, very good sound. All right, moving on to the baritone. All right, uh, for the baritone, you can use uh, the trombone, the tenor sax, or the bass clarinet, depending upon it. You're beginning to see sometimes, especially in my scoring, I will add the baritones to something that I'm doing uh, and leave all the rest of the instruments out. Uh, so for instance, if I want if I wanted not leave the rest of the instruments out, I would write the baritone in to cover for the bass clarinet. I'd write it in to cover for the bassoon, just in case you didn't have it. And I would uh, write the baritone, or I'd say that part is cue in the baritone. So if you don't have any baritone players and you got trombone players, just move one of the trombone players to the baritone part. Okay. Uh, and, and he can play the baritone part, so the baritone part is still covered, okay? The tuba, all right? Uh, the contrabass clarinet, uh, and I say the electric bass keyboard. Yes, you can use it, but you got to be careful how you use it. You want to make sure that you're getting pretty close to the color that you want of that lower instrument, but you also want to be able to co correct that volume. So you might be at letter A, you're playing, you say, okay, I want the, the, the volume at two. As you go to a louder section, you might tell the, the person that's playing that bass keyboard, to, okay, let's turn it up to bass four here. So you're going to adjust the dynamic levels on that part, okay, with the with the numbers on the uh, the volume numbers on that, so that it's not over too, it's not too much. It just adds just enough bottom to the band, okay. Then the baritone sax can cover those areas there, the bass clarinet and string bass. If you have string basses at your school. Uh, don't hesitate to put them in the band. Just when they play the march, make them play pizzicato. The rest of the things, you can use your judgment with whether you want them to play uh, 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 with, with the bow or play pizzicato. So uh, that will cover those instruments there. Okay, move on up. Move to the next page, Billy. I don't think that's... Okay, we talked about weak clarinets, uh, No, uh, 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 how to strengthen the weak clarinets by putting uh, saxophones over in that area. Let me see what else I got there. Uh, let me blow this up a little bit more. Okay. Uh, then we talk about, the, I think, the use of the, let me scroll down just a little bit. Okay. Uh, no bass clarinets and things of that nature. Uh, I kind of kind of sum it up. It's what some of the things that you might have. Now, one of the things I want to say to you guys, uh, Billy, go to the balance pyramid now. Pull that up for me. Okay, good. All right. Now, everybody's seen this pyramid. We People have talked about it for years. We show it to our band. Uh, we use it all the time. Now, when you're rescoring things, you want to make sure that you try to keep the balance of the band the way we, we want it. 
Okay. Lots of times I've heard bands where the trumpets and the drum and the percussion play too loud. So the band actually looked like a Girl Scout cookie type thing. And you want to avoid that as much as you possibly can. Okay. Uh, with that middle of it bowing out. So it might say for the flutes, I want the flutes to play softer at the top. Yeah. If you got eight or nine flutes, but if you don't, you change the flutes and only got two in there a week. I need you playing F all the time. So you want to adjust the balance pyramid so that you get that dark sound, whatever it takes to do it. If I got 20 alto saxes, I might want them playing two P's, okay, to keep the, with, say, within the balance pyramid. So whatever your odd instrumentation is or however you're trying to use it, you want to be very careful that you try to keep the pyramid so you get that dark sound. This pyramid here is based so that you can is, is built so that you do get a dark sound as you're trying to do uh, 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 as you as you as you're structuring your band. And with an odd instrumentation or a limited instrumentation, you want to be very careful that you 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 kind of adhere to that and try to stay with that idea. Now, there's only one other time that um, we got a few times. We got a few minutes for questions. I want to get to them. I want to try to do this, uh, this board thing. Uh, is it coming up? Whiteboard on. OK, I'm going to try to do this. All right. There's only one other time that the pyramid should look like this. And that's when you plan an orchestral transcription. OK, and the pyramid is going to be upside down because in the orchestra's transcription or the orchestra, the flutes and the clarinets are going to act as your as your violins and violas. So they are going to be up here. These trumpets and trombones and baritones and tubas, uh, especially trombones, baritones and tubas, they are going to be down here. And you want them to imitate the string bass or the cello line in here. So the pyramid would actually be upside down so that you get a, a softer sound down here and a louder sound as you go up to the top of that uh, that pyramid. So that's the only other time that you you're going to see that pyramid upside down. And so you get a classical sound. All right, Billy, I can I go back and I get out of this, right? If I hit back, great. All right, now I want to share something with you before we go. Billy, is it coming up? Not yet. How about there now? There you go. Yep. Okay. I want you to count the members of this band when I pull it up. Okay? You're seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm missing somebody. There, there's one other answer. I know it's 21 people in this band. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, I miscounted. Five clarinets, three flutes, one tenor sax, one bass clarinet, two trumpets, one tuba. The rest are percussion. Okay? Again, you got to choose your music wisely. Okay? And I want you to hear the sound of this little band. We're not going to play, play the whole thing. We're just going to play a little portion of it. Okay. Uh, start. Okay. I got to hide this. All right. Here we go. I'm going to move it forward. There's the director. And notice the full sound that this band is going to get. Okay, uh, screen share off. Okay. Uh, note again. Look at the sound of that group and the quality of sound that they were able to put out. And and by picking the right music, even with that little small instrumentation that they had. Okay, fourteen wins, and seven, uh, uh, seven, uh, seven percussion. Okay, 
without any trombones, without any baritone saxes, without any alto sax. They had a tenor sax, no alto saxes, no French horns, no bassoons, no baritone sax. Okay, by choosing the music, that's what we was able to come up with and get a good a good quality sound with that group. Uh, I think we got about six or seven minutes left. Uh, Billy, I want to open those up to questions that people might have. All right, so if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and type them into the chat. And Billy's going to read them to me. Dr. Hilliard, we had a, a really great question that it okay. said, is it possible to use a lawnmower in place of some saxophone? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, because if I remember the joke, you could tune the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also have from uh, Brett Babineau who okay. said, can you talk about what an adjudicator should do? Oh, that's right. Say or think when encountering these strategies in an assessment performance. OK, uh, I, I don't take off for as adjudicator myself. I don't take off for people trying to rescore and do and work with what they have to work with. I've always said you do the best you can with what you have to work with. And, 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 and if a director is showing me that he's trying and this is all he has and he has to spread saxophones here and he does things there, I'm still going to start basing what I do on tone, intonation, balance, pitch, uh, technique. I'm going to go right down the judges sheet. I'm not going to penalize anybody for doing that. And I think it's wrong if you do that. Uh, and also, if you're going to rescore something on your sheet that you, for an instrument you don't have, make sure you notate that uh, on the uh, on the score that this solo is cued in the baritone part or wherever you know as you because you didn't have the instrumentation for it. So, but no, you should not under any circumstance. I don't think penalize someone for doing the best they can with the instrumentation that they have. Because you really don't know everybody's situation. And every situation can be a little bit different. All right. Dr. Hurd, that looks like all we have in the chat for right okay. now. Okay. All right. I want to thank you guys for joining me. And, uh, and I want to thank LMEA for inviting me. Now, I also want to do this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. If you're looking to rescore something, and you're not sure about it, then let me uh, send it to me and we'll talk about it. Take a picture of it. Send it to me on the phone. It's okay. So, all right. You can rescore this for this and this, and this will work out. I'll help you rescore it. I don't have a problem doing that. So anything that you need that I can help you in any way regarding that, go ahead and go ahead and, and ask me or call me and I'll be more than happy to do it. All right. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, Dr. Hilliard, on behalf of LMEA, we thank you. Um, you know, guys, uh, Dr. Hilliard is always, you know, talking about what Cameron said early, early on in the opening statements that doesn't matter what situation you're in, you can still uh, be successful. Uh, and, and Dr. Hilliard, one of his things that he always does, not just in his music, but also in his teaching and his mentorship, is he, he takes on the challenges of a small band, of yeah. interesting, you know, unusual instrumentation, uh, and he helps them out. So we really appreciate that, you know, the music educators in this state for sure and thank across you. the country. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Okay. Hilliard, for your uh, insight. Okay. All right. You have, you guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. And thanks for having me. Bye bye.